IFA 2016 is just wrapping up, but if you don't know what IFA is, think of it like CES, but for Europe, usually where we see big product announcements, and we did see some cool, some crazy, and some bizarre products get announced this year. So let me show you some of the highlights, some of the coolest, weirdest things that we saw at IFA. Let's start with the abomination that I want more than any tech product right now, just because. This is the gargantuan Acer Predator 21X. I think at this point you can't call this thing a laptop. It's more of like a like a desktop you can lug around with you. So first, it has a ridiculous 21 inch screen. If that's not ridiculous enough, it's a curved 21 inch screen. Then how about you throw in dual GeForce GTX 1080 graphic chips for, for good measure. And then maybe just add in a toss of eye tracking technology, which during a demo you can actually use to play games like move your eyes and shoot the enemy. 64 gigs of RAM in this thing. And if that's not insane enough, they also have a mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX switches into this thing. It is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. And again, I don't know why, but I, I feel like I need one. But I don't know when I can get one because release of pricing hasn't really been announced. But damn, look at that thing. It You're going to need to have like a workout regimen to carry this thing around. But imagine the looks you're going to get in Starbucks when you work on your screenplay. What trade show would be complete without some phones? And Sony was there with a couple tiny computers. The phone looks really nice. It's kind of a dark navy blue hued phone. And I like the design language that Sony has, but maybe it's time to try something new. Nothing from the spec departments here is gonna blow you away. Snapdragon 820 and kind of the rest of the stuff you'd expect from a mid to high range phone. But what is awesome with Sony phones is that 23 megapixel camera. And megapixel just side, Sony makes some of the best sensors going. And in fact, they're so good, most manufacturers are using their sensors anyway. So if you want a killer camera, look for the XZ but I doubt that it's gonna to come to the US anyway, so look to buy one unlocked. If you like your phone smaller with a compact in their name, then perhaps the Xperia X Compact might be for you. We used to love Sony when they would squeeze all these high-end specs into smaller phones, but that, that's not the case here. Instead, you're getting kind of middle-of-the-road Snapdragon chip and a bunch of the same specs. But you are getting that awesome 23 megapixel camera that we just talked about in the Xperia XZ. It did feel nice to hold, a bit like the unapologetically plastic Classic phones that may have come from other companies. I'm not gonna mention any names, but again, a nice mid-range phone. The chances are we won't see here in the U.S. But what if you're in the category like me, where you're like your phone's big and your tablet's small? Perhaps the brand new Huawei MediaPad M3 might be one to consider. 8.4 inch, all metal design. It's got Huawei's take on Android on it. Love it or hate it, but Google plays there, so throw a launcher on. Other than that, it's the tablet that we've all seen before. A few nice additions though. The home screen, you can sort of swipe over and get access to multitasking. It's a nice little trick that they've included. If you're a fan of good speakers on your tablet, they partnered with Harman Kardon on here and they sounded loud to us, even in a crowded conference hall, but we'll have to get them home in the lab, test it out and see how they sound. The screen looks really nice to the naked eye, which is a weird expression to say. I'm gonna put a shirt on my eyes. No one, no one's, no one's gotta see that. The display does look to be pretty solid. I did like how light it felt though. It seems like it's perfect just for watching a movie or catching a book on a train or plane ride. Plus, starting at 350 euros, that doesn't hurt either. Huawei didn't say if we'll see it in the US, but if we do, I'll let you know. Maybe you'll just come and visit, or maybe you get a work visa. There were also some smartwatches that got announced. You're probably thinking, I'm gonna mention Huawei, LG, Samsung, the usual players, but no, how about Withings? The folks that made that regular watch that actually had some smartwatch functionality into it, they are back with the Withing Steel HR, which, not surprisingly, is made out of steel. And it's got a built-in heart rate monitor, as you'd expect, again, from that HR name. And it looks like a classic watch, something a lot of people are looking for. They might not want a screen on their wrist. I've been using smartwatches for a while. This one felt a little bit small to me, but it felt really solid and well built and the feature set is what you want so if you need that heart rate monitor and you want a classic watch look without a giant screen it's a pretty good option there's obviously a ton more from IFA and we covered a ton more from IFA but these are some of the things I thought were the most interesting discussion pieces not all obviously were great not all knocked things out of the park but some were interesting so what do you guys think about IFA 2016 give us a like for gigantic curved laptops I feel like they they deserve it till next time I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo